I do that, do we, are there any other questions before we conclude the meeting? I know we're well over time, and I really appreciate the folks that have hung around um, well beyond, 45 minutes beyond at this point, the scheduled time. Any other questions? Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Paul Dunn. I'm from. I'm a dentist, general dentist from uh, Leveland. That's 30 miles west of Lubbock, almost to New Mexico state line. I'll keep this very simple and very quick. I'm going to throw out some comments to you. I will provide you with any of the documentation that you need, and we can discuss this at a later point. But I thought it needed to be brought up. Uh, I'm also a member of Texas Dentists for Medicaid Reform. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a lobbyist for the state of Texas, but I am not hired by Texas Dentist for Medicaid Reform. I want to thank you for having this opportunity to visit. Several years ago, as MCOs came on board and we were having Medicaid and dental meetings, stakeholder meetings, as we ran into a lot of problems with the implementation of it, uh, we went from 75 people to 400 people showing up at these meetings because we all had the same problems. Don't do what they did. As we came into the problems and the problem I was having in Leveland and the guy in Longview and the guy in Brown, uh, Brownsville all having the same problems, we were bringing this forward. The uh, Dr. Altdorf and her crew decided they didn't want to answer those questions, so they stopped us from asking questions. You couldn't. You had to submit us uh, ahead of time, and they got to pick the questions, and it finally all died, and we didn't get this. So thank you for having this and being open to do this. I've got a concern that I have had as a dentist and as a private uh, general dentist, but also we had the Texas Dentist for Medicaid Reform had done this survey for the last, for most of the fall, and the results came out just basically this week. Uh, there are a couple of things that I'd like to put out, and you don't have to respond to them. Number one, uh, we had uh, some dentists that had pre-approved dental work through MCNA, and uh, they had, did it. They had it pre-approved. They got the work done. MCNA came back in later and pulled the money back out of their account without any uh, due process or any notification. I th would like to know if they have that power, was that power granted to them by HHSC or was it granted by the state legislature? Uh, we also have some that have filed a lot of complaints and MCNA basically kicked them out of the system. Can they do that, or is this becoming started operating procedure where if we complain, if I complain today about MCNA, are they going to kick me out tomorrow? Um, and we talked about uh, retaliation uh, and the HSSC. In the survey, they came out that the number of people that did carry from a, an appeal to HHSC, 100% of the people that said they took it to HHSC said they were abandoned by HHSC, that they never did anything for them. So we need to look at that and see what it is. And I'll be happy to provide any of this documentation to it. Uh, my main question and the whole point of this is, as a provider, where is my protection against a company that's running over us? It seems like after uh, uh, MCNA took on Governor Perry as a uh, board of directors, it was almost like they didn't have to respond to us in any manner at all anymore. We can't get uh, telephone calls. We have no numbers to call them on. If we do appeals, it seems to disappear into the system. And we need somebody, and I know you talk about the ombudsman. When we were doing the other problems with the startup and everything, the ombudsman basically threw us back to the company and we never got anything done. So give us something to grab onto when we really have a problem that will help us out. Okay. You no, know, I really appreciate the, the feedback of a couple of things. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I'd be interested in seeing the results of your I, survey. I'll make sure that you get a copy of the survey. Survey. That would be great. And is that where some of the feedback that you conveyed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was coming because I was, I was already set to come because of my own problems, which is, and this just mirrored that okay. in the fact that, and you, you realize that on survey, probably only the people that were really upset were the ones that responded. You know, not ever maybe, if you were happy with the company, you didn't send it in. But we've got a problem with the MCO. There's some good things that have come about all of this, uh, especially for the dentist. But there, when we're getting run over in some areas, and we don't seem to have anywhere to go for the problem. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, not the the outlet you'd expect to be able to vocalize your your concerns. So it's good. I'm glad you're here you. um, because that helps to elevate, you know, sort of a larger concern. But I would like to see the results of the survey. I would 
like to talk to you offline okay. too, um, specifically bit. about the issues regarding our, you know, one of our our DMOs, um, and I think that might be helpful. And we can talk a little bit as well about responsiveness on our end on the part of the ombudsman's office. We, we were concerned the fact that a hundred percent of the people said that's, that HHSC yeah, basically washed their hands of them. Uh, yeah, that's very concerning. So absolutely, let's follow up with the conversation. Any other questions? Oh, there's a couple. One last comment and question, and I'll make this real quick. First of all, I do want to thank, thank you, Ms. Snyder, Gary, Jesse, John Seagraves, for your work and efforts, as well as your team. Um, your hard work does not go unnoticed. Uh, piggyback on uh, the dentist uh, who made the con who made the um, commentary on uh, payment holds. I want to just briefly talk about that. I have reached out to HHSC many, many times uh, with this issue and how MC excuse me DMOs in particular one company has excluded itself from the spirit of the law and ask for recoupments on administrative errors, uh, even going back to four years. I represent a group practice. I also speak with many providers in the community as well as senators, representatives, and keep them up to breast on what is going on um, with issues that hinder access to care. That being said, I want to strongly convey that we do not object to um, we do not object to to investigations. Excuse me, as as that is it's taxpayer. We want we uh, support the integrity. What we do object to is uh, payment holds uh, and recoupments based on administrative errors. For example, dates maybe perhaps in the wrong place, um, but where there is complete documentation of work that was completed successfully. Uh, we ask that you please uh, put thought process, put um, initiative into the session with this regard. Um, I believe that uh, this has hindered the integrity of the dental Medicaid program, and there needs to be there needs to be feedback from HHSC on this. I've like I said, I've emailed many, many times. I do compliment the agency since Gary, Jesse, and his team. You guys have been on board. Uh, there has been many great changes that I've seen, but this issue has somewhat fell off to the wayside, and I would appreciate it if you would take the time to speak with me as well, and we can provide you with many, many examples of this and how this is causing uh, harassment, coercion, profit incentives, um, and many other things. So just a brief touch on that. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. And thank you for the open communication. Absolutely. And if we could touch base, maybe the three of us could touch base subsequent to the wrap-up of the meeting, that would be wonderful. Any other questions? You guys are troopers. We have been here for, what, four-plus hours? Okay. Okay. I think that's it. Our next meeting, John, remind oh, there it is. July 12th, 2017, so we'll see you in the heat of the summer, but certainly um, we welcome your feedback in the interim, and thanks so much for your, your helpful feedback.